Now, Waziri, you were telling us about the bottom-up economic transformation yeah. agenda yeah. and how it ties in then to addressing the issues that we have been facing and how okay. we unlock. City had asked you, do we have thinkers uh -huh. and do other thinkers then driving to yeah. new... That is, that, is, that is the real crux. They are thinkers because even the manifesto itself, if you read it, let me, let me first of all go through the, the theater the way I wanted to tie to the issues that have come here. Mm. The first thing is actually human capital development. Mm. And let me, let me sidestep a little bit and say, what was the government's agenda in the last 20 or so years? Mm. 30 years. It's... it's um, Economic transformation, uh, no, 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 no. export-led growth. Mm. Okay. Export-led growth. What did we want to do? We wanted to replicate the East Asian miracles. Query wrong. Query That's the truth. Yes, but just look at the East Asian before, by the time they got there into export-led growth, what had happened? They had spent 50 years in terms of their cap human capital development. Yes. Their savings were much higher than consumption. Okay? Capital accumulation mm. itself must rise to thresholds that ignite economic transformation. So they were ready to take off. But where were we? Even our export processing, APZ, were not working. Yep. So even exports were not working. How can we have an export-led growth when we are auto, when our, even our own human capital development is checked? The second thing in the beta is protecting markets. But I want to sidestep and say, we want to start from a very low beginning we want to develop those markets we want to nudge them to the optimal level take it if we, whether it is we are reviving sugar sector we are reviving coffee mm. we are into tea we uh, milk is something that is working um even uh, housing is also a market okay mm. we develop that market we nudge it to the optimal level mm. We protect it because if you don't protect it, you'll be captured. Yeah. Why markets are filled? Why sugar, coffee? We are not able to revive coffee. It's because there is capture. You have to have protection. And the third one is you regulate the markets just to make sure that it is following the rules. That's why when we were opening this water, we cannot even open it. Okay? Mm. I, I go into places and I ask, oh, do we have quality controls of this and that, because that's what the market relies on. Let me say, why is market very important, and especially to the bottom-up economic transformation agenda? Because it is in the marketplace where economic rents is generated and distributed. Query wrong. Well, eh? So, it means that if we keep that market, if we safeguard that market, if we protect that market and regulate that market to do the right things, mm -hmm. That is why downstream, mm. I'll be seeing the market is working. Downstream, I'll increase production and productivity because I'm going to get more income. Yes. The government comes in to safeguard when things go haywire. For example, what has the government done this week? It has provided money to mop up excess milk because they don't want the prices to be affected. And when you mop up that excess milk, turn it into powder. What is the government doing? It's raising you above the curve it's you should always be above the curve ahead of the curve it's protecting that producer it, and is that is protecting that market to function okay these are life examples then let me throw in the question here and let, let that, me finish that small yeah. end of the market yeah is feeling the pinch it's the one that's complaining now and wondering so this government says it's supporting me it's protecting me but this government is taxing me dry yeah, for government to get those resources, it is providing you to move up the meal. It has to be tax revenue because that's the only gov that's the only way the government generates its income. Let's not let's not chase our shadow here, because if the government has no other way except generating resources from taxation, but I'm going to talk about taxation later because it's the next point I want to make, and I want to make it very clear because these are works that I've done in the past, and they were. I call it domestic resource mobilization. But let me first of all finish with the markets. When markets are working and markets are functioning, the economy is vibrant. When markets don't work, when the markets are interfered with, we get the kind of results we have got from the cotton industry, we can't even remember. Textile industry, we can't even say anything about it. Sugar, we are importing most of the sugar, yet we have sugar farms and people are not getting paid. Coffee, 
uh, we, we, you can see the poverty that has engulfed the coffee sector, the, 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 the regions where coffee was growing. Mm. So that's why we have to go back to the drawing board and say, we have to make sure that markets function. Mm. The third component is that government can only finance development through domestic resource mobilization. Part of that is actually taxation. I believe in optimal instruments of taxation. But you see, the first year of administration, you just have to first of all see which areas are you going to come. Mm. Right now, we are working on so much on that, so that in the next cycle, we are actually going to make sure that we have taxes that do not distort the market. Hmm. I would that's, prefer, that's, 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 that's one. Let, let me finish this yeah. because it's, this is technical area which, let me say, I have worked for many years. Mm. And I will give you an, an example so, to ignite, the, to spice the debate. The second thing is that you have to make sure that markets do not affect the demand structure of the product you are taxing. Mm -hmm. The third contribution is that, the third important point is that taxes and tax revenue must be predictable. So far, we have moved from that, that, that from, we are now almost at 16% of, uh, we are moving towards, we have a target to move towards 18, 19% of GDP. Mm. We are at 15.8 now, we are crossing the 16.8%. You can see we are very far. The, 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 the required expenditure to GDP is about 24%. Mm. So we have that gap. Mm. So just imagine if you have that gap, and we are complaining about taxation. What will what will close that gap? You can only borrow, mm. but can you borrow for consumption? You no, can't. you can't. And you should. You are kidding yourself. Mm. That is where we are. But I think my 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 m most important point is actually to promise that we are going to analyze this because at the same time we also want to support markets mm -hmm. because you can overkill if you tax. My first time to go into this area mm. was in two thousand and one. And the, the treasurer was actually having b a big warfare with uh, excisable products. Yes. Uh, there are so many beer, mm. cigarettes, sodas, Everything water. was excise. But alcohol was the most vicious. Mm. And I was called and I was working with the keeper at that time and I was told, would like you to help us about this and blah, blah, blah. And in the end I said, I think what I'm going to do is to develop an op a, a model that optimizes uh, 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 tax revenue from excisable products. Mm. Essentially, what am I saying? Excisable products are imposed for two reasons. One, you want to raise revenue, and the other one, you want to uh, encourage responsible consumption behavior. Mm. In some cases, some of them are seen taxes like beer, yes. cigarettes, those are seen taxes. What you are trying to do is to say, because they have elastic demand, you can actually uh, tax as much as you can get away with so that you can get revenue, but also uh, uh, ensure that there will be consumption, uh, consu uh, responsible consumption behavior. Mm. But the bottom line is that if you tax the point where you affect the demand structure, then you start losing the game. There's a lava curve. There's an optimal point where after that, if you continue taxing, then people anywhere. start looking for products. And isn't that where we are right now, Azir? No, that was the we are not, we are not there. We have because not, nobody, we, has, yeah. done, nobody well, has done any analysis to show that. Waziri, here we no. are in a situation, and I can, understand, I can understand you what there. you're saying in terms of building an ideal situation whereby... No, I'm not one, building one, an ideal situation. One, I'm building two, a practical solution. ...would happen. I can understand. And say yeah. looking towards a solution. But, you know, there's this adage that has come and been used very regularly in Kenya today that the things on the ground are very, very different. And I think that at some point when you listen to the heartbeat of the nation, that here you are looking at a situation that is not pretty. We know also that there is no country on earth that has developed through taxation. It is not possible for that to happen. Number two, again, going back to the debt, there is a huge amount of debt in terms of a burden on Kenya today, for which we know conscientiously should have happened for development. That borrowing should have happened for development. Those are the boundaries within which yeah. Kenya can borrow. Yeah. Yeah. So now here we are saying that yeah. there is a problem. Yeah. The, You've uh, not been able yeah. to develop this infrastructure that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, so the yeah. question is, where did the money that was borrowed for development go? 
Okay, that's what I said that we need a forensic audit because it's a, you see we are now one year in this administration we cannot answer that question adequately unless we have a, 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 a nice structure. But I wanted to answer a simple question mm. because I think the, 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 there's, there's a, the, let, let's put it this way. You're saying we borrow. We will still have to pay it in future. That, that is the whole thing. Right now we are paying for the past. Yeah. So, so again you have to realize that Everything is adding up. Mm. It's only that it is it is hitting us so hard. It's only that it is heavy burden on us right now. But that is not to to say that we are breaking away from this the concept. There is logic to it. Mm. But I, I wanted to come to this point because it's very clear why I'm going back to the analysis yeah. to inform us where we are. Because right now nobody can tell us where we are. I remember when even I, you can't tell us. No, no, I can't. But uh, I am still waiting for. I still. I'm, <laughs> let me tell you. I believe in analytical work because you I can defend. Mm. I can defend a structure on the basis of the analysis. But I don't want to wake up and rule of the thumb, and then I no. tomorrow you forget. Why did I do that? You want data informed. I want data informed, but also a theoretical structure that is plausible. Yes. If two plus two is equal to four. Isn't it? Yes. So, so you have to. It's obvious, but why do we have to repeat it all the time? Because, because it gives us a framework of analysis. Yes, it does. That, that is what we are trying to do. But I just wanted to give you that story in 2001. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we realized that that time when I analyzed, the optimal taxation le level of, uh, for example, beer was about 69%. Oh, no, I think 65%. Mm. But the actual taxation was about 89%. So it means that what w two things were happening. The poor were downgrading consumption. Yeah. But there were no products below beer. So they were actually downgrading consumption and going to products that nobody can vouch for them in mm. terms of alcohol content. So you lose the responsible consumption behavior. And the other thing is that those products that were coming in, are, they are illicit now, we call them illicit. They were not in the tax bracket. So we were losing them. Losing That's revenue. why the conclusion I made is that do not make sure that you do not tax to affect the demand structure of the product. The second thing mm -hmm. is that the rich were upgrading consumption because we have different levels of taxing beer. Uh, the beer, the spirits. wine, and the spirits, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Different levels. In fact, I was doing some computations uh, last year and I, was, I showed that if you look at the current taxation, uh, beer is taxed five times more than whiskey if you are to look at alcohol content. Mm. <laughs> so we are subsidizing the guys. The beer people are subsidizing the, the people who are drinking whiskey. alcohol. Mm. Now, it's, a, it's an, just an example. It's just an example. Yeah. But you see, the bottom line is that when we, the government actually, that time, the then minister agreed that, oh, this is a fantastic thing to do. That is Chris O'Kem. But then after that, six months, he was out of the way. Another person who came in imposed another tax and on top of it, VAT. And we it lost went the south game. again. After that, and you have seen so much has been written about it. After that, what came into it was just illicit drinks, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. lost the market. The point I wanted to tell you is that we need now to update ourselves and ask ourselves, where are we now? That's the first point I wanted to make. But Prof... Uh, you have access to this information. Mm. A department that is under your ministry collects data on a regular basis. It's the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. You've got all this data. Why um, do you need a year uh, to say, you know, I'm collecting data, I'm getting analysis? No, no, no. no, no, no. I didn't say I've taken a year. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, these studies are not also done in the morning. You have to f also ask yourself, mm. for example, I want data for different diverse products and I want some experts to help me. They are not going to, those who correct the data cannot do the data analysis. It's mm. going to be difficult. This is a specialized area. Uh, the, you know, when I'm, when I'm saying that, I actually said, so told people that nobody else has ever done that. And we had experts in the treasure, by the way. Anyway, that's for another day. But I, I will come back to tell you that there is no way you can sit back and say that the, 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 the taxation is beyond this point because you have to unrise that. So if you are to speak... You have to generate that. If you are to speak right now yeah. to the people who are running micro, small and medium enterprises in this country, mm -hmm. would you tell them that the taxation and the tax measures that are currently in place are justified? And two that you're sure 
that those measures will help them to grow their businesses. I, th- I think I think uh, you are making a mistake here because I didn't say I cannot tell them they are just fine. I can only tell them that it is very important to pay taxes if we are also looking for res- for <laughs> for services. Okay. I can I was also tell them mm. why we are not getting uh, the services that we want for example electricity and all that is because we have not invested enough. Okay? So we need more. But revenue. I will tell them that mm. we can actually look at that space and see how we optimize it. And that is the journey we are taking up. Nobody has done that. So how long how long should they no, wait no, for, let's not for go, this conversation? That that conversation on optimization. The next because time I prof, come to this conversation I will have this. I will have actual actual things to tell you. It's because anecdotally this is sort of the complaint that comes no, every no, no, time no. we have a conversation <laughs> here. People who are running small business are feeling all right so I've got new costs in the name of tax. And even in compliance it's a cost as well. No. And they feel like this government that was then came in on the promise of supporting them from the bottom. Let, the small let, and let's first for let's first for be clear on the, the facts. Mm. Because essentially I asked someone yes. which taxes has this government imposed? And tell me if you remove fuel I even made it clear why we had to to bring the fuel because we were constantly on tax uh, the, 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 the we were actually actually it was being taken away by the uh, the, the 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 fuel uh, industry mm-hmm. and and that's why we had to close that gap and i have seen the history it started with zero rating things didn't work so essentially if you ask people which taxes actually they don't know but because essentially this government which tax do they add just tell me levies you know the which levies okay. nothing changed the cost they are the same level the cost the of only tax that was adjusted mm. was the fuel tax because that component was being taken up by the oil industry they were claiming a system and I in the speech and even now I went to parliament I even went back and sorry in the national dialogue I mm. went back and explained how this comes because that amount of money was being taken by someone else and that we have to create to cross that anomaly but if you if you ask someone honestly which taxes are you talking about how did they change we have not changed anything but because it is the in word in town mm. yeah let, i told you i told me, you me, i told, we have I gave, asked that I, question yeah, mm. i gave you the example question. i told you that the answer that they've given us because yeah. you asked that question even here mm-hmm. the answer that they've given us is the cost outlay for them when nhif contributions rise and the employer contribution rises the employer sees it as a cost money going out when uh, health contributions rise the employer sees it as that going out and then when compliance also rises in terms of now i have to make sure that i pay within a certain time i've got all those the small small things add up to a bit small business person remember th- we are talking about a small business person who's just basically just operating with 5 10 members of staff trying to hold on to every shilling so that they can reinvest they are saying this is money that i could have used that i'm no longer able to use because i'm giving it to let me let me let me tell you yes and i've uh, been uh, for almost 40 years teaching economics is that everybody agreed and we did survey that people budget on their disposable income they have never budget budget budgeted on uh, on 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 their gross income uh, uh, so this argument is actually uh, like and, and most people have done even micro studies to analyze that even me today mm. I actually don't even want to know about my gross salary because I budget on my disposable income. And human beings adapt to their disposable income. There of course in the short term there is ratchet effect that you want to defend the previous peak of consumption. But let's face it, I am actually listening to this debate I'm saying it did something go wrong somewhere. Yes. But it now, did. now it did. No, no, no. No, no. In terms of interpretation. No, no, yes. no. That is that has no evidence. And and I wanted to finish my point so that we can come through to the to the true debate. Okay. And especially domestic resource mobilization. Yes. What my my argument and my strong brief which is something that I have talked about so many years and I've done and especially for example remember when I started this debate on domestic resource mobilization is when we started the infrastructure board in 2009 during the global financial crisis and we managed to raise resources that would fund the government budget okay 
So, essentially, when I'm talking about domestic resource mobilization, we are talking about income, uh, sorry, tax and even non-tax income. Why are we talking about that? Mm. It's because if we do not manage to cover our own expenditures, expenditures, then it's going to be very difficult for us to survive mm. because the investments that we want to do on roads and all that, we can finance them with long-term debt. Mm. That's one. The second thing is that the government is buffeted by short-term uh, short maturities of, uh, of borrowed funds, which were using 91 days. You know what happens during when everybody is anticipating elections to come, they use short-term paper. Mm. 91 days, isn't it? So you can imagine, you find yourself running very fast to remain on the same position. Because it's a short-term paper, maturities are hitting you very every week. Last, last uh, at the beginning of, uh, let's say, in March, we were being hit by maturities that you cannot afford. Mm. So the bottom line is that you need revenue, recurrent revenue for you to service that debt because you cannot defect, default on debt. And the government is, uh, and, the, and there's the, the constitution is very clear, you cannot default on public debt. It's, it's not a choice, Okay. You know what happens internationally if you did default, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you also know that the legally you cannot default. So we have to look at things and say, look, if suppose you are running your own household and you should ask yourself, you have a budget in your own household, isn't it? Yep. It means that when things are tight, you have to know exactly you where, your belt. how to tighten your belt. Yes. You know, it is worse than... No, no, it was worse in 2003, in 2002, 2003, and every Kenyan tightened their own belts. But right now, everybody is talking about tax, and if you ask a specific question, they don't give you. They don't give you the specific answers. But we do know why. Why is it? We are coming from very devastating consequences. What happened the COVID-19? Those are accumulated costs. Mm. What happened to the, the drought? It reversed most of the uh, things that were achieved. Uh, what happened to the Ukrainian crisis? Then we have supply disruptions, mm. especially fuel. If so, we go to countries in Eastern Europe, in, sorry, in, in Western Europe, they are suffering more than us in terms of fu uh, uh, fuel cost. If we look into a little then, bit more detail, Waziri, so as you say all of these things, and just a few short months ago, you actually did say during the budget making process announcement, and you said that, you know what, it doesn't look very good. The next one year is going to be very difficult. You you said yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. So, and the, that's the, the reality. And the people that you are addressing, is this this person who has this small business? Those are the people that you were addressing. So, if we're saying that nothing has really changed in terms of taxes on one hand, but you're still telling people that the next twelve months is going to be extremely difficult, what were you alluding to? I was alluding to the fact that the government didn't have resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are continuing, we are buffeted by shocks. Let me put it this way because I was coming to this point anyway. Mm. Right now, when we went to the, <coughs> to, 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 to talk to, uh, the annual meeting is where we talk to all finance ministers are talking to each other in the world, in the annual meetings of the World Bank and the IMF, all governors of the Central Bank are there, we are talking to each other. I realize that it's, it's the same thing across frontier markets like Kenya. And you find yourself in concentrate in a liquidity crisis, but not a solvency challenge. Mm. But the way you are suggesting, for example, lower taxes, uh, at, uh, and even you can't even go to the international markets, they're already closed, the interest rates are so high, mm. the dollar is migrating to U.S. because of higher returns, all this combination, there are some choices if you take, they can actually ignite Solvency challenges. Let me give you an example, a flat example. Mm. Mm. If you, if you uh, incur debt with a real interest rate that is higher than the real growth of the economy, you are igniting solvency challenges. Okay, that's why we are saying we are in a. That's why I argued that because of the recession that actually has been with us for a, for a long time, it means that the revenues are checked. Yes. Mm. It means that we have to tighten the belt until we turn around the economy. How do we jumpstart the economy? Just, just, just do it. That's why I was giving all the four issues. But we have to make sure that for, for, for us to succeed, we have to tighten our belt so that we glide over this crisis. What are we trying to do? There are two things. You had asked me about even the debt and the payment of the eurobond. Mm. 
That is the one that is even hitting on us because everybody is looking at us at, as a risk, but we cannot default. Mm. We the cannot afford position, to default. We cannot default. You cannot even default on the domestic debt mm -hmm. because the signaling is mm -hmm. going to be there. Mm -hmm. Even simple mistakes you are reported in the Paris Club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> we don't have wiggle room, basically. No, we, no. we don't have, we, 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 we we don't don't have, have space. But mm -hmm. what the government strategy and policy is this. We can buy back portions. We're starting now. Buy back portions of the euro bond so that we reduce our exposure and reduce the jitters in the market. Why is it so complicated? We borrowed $2 billion in 2014 yeah. mm -hmm. at 6.85% for 10 years, and you pay as a bullet. Don't ask me about the details. Prof, you know, you've just answered the question you've raised because... No, no, let me come back to... The, you, back you, to no, I, mm -hmm. I, this one I have to point to you. You've actually done something here mm -hmm. that shed the light. Yeah. When we heard of 45 billion being paid, see, you just explained it. There is this larger picture called the market, and it's yeah. many people. Mm -hmm. When you pay, you quieten the market. Now, yeah, when you yeah, quieten the nice. market, very nice. You yeah. open up opportunities. That's that's what I wanted to say. Now, the guy is doing yes, my job is. nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, the city, you are yeah. doing my job nicely because that's where I was going. When you reduce the jitters, then you have opportunities in the market. Because right now, why we were saying we have to tighten our belt is because there are there is about twenty billion dollars of euro bond due in the year, in the next year mm. for african economies but the kenyan one is the biggest it's a coupon of two billion it's large and most people don't know that dot of a country called kenya you realize that somebody was giving an example when there is a coup in algeria in algiers there is the interest rates in kenya rise mm. we, we are not even connected we are very far from them but uh, the international market does not understand how we are but we want to make sure that we cool the market Secondly, we give ourselves room that if we wanted to refinance any of our debts through the market, the market is going to give us uh, interest rates that are commensurate or you can actually uh, take debt in, w using those interest rates, as I said, without in inviting solvency challenges. I left it at uh, domestic resource mobilization mm -hmm. and I have dealt with human capital. I've dealt with markets. I've dealt with domestic resource mobilization. But what are we good at? The digital evolution. We, have, we are good at that. It is the one that is going to coordinate all those things. That is why in the beta is actually emphasizing those things and saying that, look, we can actually focus on sectors that can give us the best momentum for economic recovery. Once we have solved these short-term things, as you said, my dear, mm. my dear, for, my dear sister, those, those issues are short-term. Mm. The budget is read, the budget speech is supposed to be functional for one year, isn't it? Yes. We believe that once we tighten our belts in one year, we will have seen light at the end of the tunnel and then move to the next phase. And that is why we are working on these sectors that we believe that are going to create momentum, a bigger momentum. But we are also saying we have to change policy paradigm through policy changes and policy interventions. What did we say also? What is the main picture? We actually said we are going to rely on the bilaterals to help us on this. Bilaterals is IMF, the World Bank, and African Development Bank. Those are the bilaterals that we use. We are going to rely on our bilaterals. You have seen how His Excellency the President has gone around so many countries, Frederick countries that are willing and actually asking how they can package. Package, uh, uh, package resources to, for us to ride over the, the, the liquidity crisis. And then the final line of support or line of uh, support that we're looking for is our regional DFIs because they're capable of uh, syndicating loans mm -hmm. at commercial but more concessional funding. Okay. That way, we ride over the short term. But we ride over the short term with a structure on the long term. And that's why the bottom-up economic transformation agenda is to look at the long term. We failed in the previous models that we tried, for example. Import substitution, industrialization, uh, city, you remember those days? I recall those days vividly, yes. Yeah, when we wanted to industrialize using, and uh, in, you, you, you are having uh, capital-intensive uh, manufacturing industries in a capital-scarce country. Export-led growth when we were not ready with our institutions, you can see we, are, we have not managed. 
Let's come to the reality and say we don't want a model, we want an agenda. That's why bottom up economic transformation transformation is an agenda. Is an agenda. Is an agenda. But why yeah. have economists not created this economic transformation? That is what is being in answered in this. Form. In all these things, Prof, mm -hmm. as you're saying, yeah. mm -hmm. the bigger thing is so that we can get out of this mess that we are in, mm -hmm. we have to do a couple of things. One, we've got to acknowledge that we are in a bad situation, all of us as a country. And then we have to accept to tighten our belts so that we can all ride out of this. Is the government tightening its belt? Yes. How am, is the government I, I am at belt? the center of that. Let and me I ask a question so mm -hmm. then you can explain. When the president went to open parliament last year, the first thing that he said is we'd like to cut back our spending by 300 billion shillings. And he tasked the national treasury, find how you shall bring back that 300 billion shillings. Our budget for this year, and we've been saying, has gone up from 3.2 to 3.6, 3.7 trillion. Increasing our own... Uh, deficit, which means we're increasing how much money we need to borrow for that financial year. The dialogue committee has come back and said, even with this budget, we can still cut back travel by this much. Okay. It means that when you are taking this yeah. budget to parliament, yeah. you me, had still put in let, some let me, let me, unnecessary see, expenditures thank, on thank, travel. Thank you. That thank, MPs thank, are coming to tell you, by the way, you thank, can cut back this travel. Thank, how you, thank you, because I think uh, sometimes most of the data that we have does not pass through the whole the whole process and most of the time you be seen like you are trying to say a few things to safeguard yourself no you're not when the president said and we did go out to cut the budget by 300 uh, billion we also found that the two to three was misused to the tune of the same we were actually desperate like what we are cutting Actually, was to compensate the carryover. Has already no, been no, no, taken that, that's through. That's one. That's one. Article two, two, three. That is one. Mm. The second thing is that last week I was asked. Two weeks ago I was asked, "Why are you coming to the for supplementary one just after the first quarter? What has happened? Didn't weren't you sure about the budget? Exactly. And I told them, let's face the reality here. Because of the interest." cost that is increasing on external debt and also the, the depreciation of the, 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 the currency. Yeah. It has increased expenditure by 0.9% of GDP. That is in, in actual of money is 145 billion, which was not anticipated when we, we developed and presented the budget to the parliament. How do we accommodate that? Okay? Just you know, just following up on mm -hmm. your case, mm -hmm. just following up on your case, and you can see that it means it means that we you are not. We, 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 we are not. We, we are we are not having a reprieve. Even the external sector is affecting us, so we have to readjust again to the next tune. We had budget, we had the forecast a, a deficit of four point four percent. It means that if you now add this extra expenditure coming from interest cost and uh, the effect of uh, external debt because of exchange rate appreciation, so there are two running factors. The interest rate is rising internationally, so it means our external debt is rising, mm. but also it is compounded by also the depreciation of the currency. Mm. In essence, then we have a 0.9%, 145 billion, which you had not even budgeted for. Okay, so it's in a sense is that that is point zero nine percent. So it means that the deficit we had targeted of four point four percent, you add zero point nine percent comes to five point three, isn't it? It's untenable. That is not that's not the direction we promised to take. After a lot of negotiations and discussions, we actually said we can only accommodate up to four point seven percent of deficit. That is adding 0.3%, isn't it? How much is that in shillings? 0.3%. That's um, take 0.3% uh, times 145. Uh, that should give us nine, uh, so close to 57, close to 57 million. Mm. Because 90 so billion, uh, close to 57 billion, uh, 40, uh, sorry, 45 billion. Uh, no, 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 55 billion. Then because 90 billion is the is what we have to accommodate. Mm. Two things. Where do we get the point, uh, the point six percent? 
that is close to 90 billion we either have to cut the expenditure by the same amount yep. or generate revenue to the same amount yep. we can't go to what she's complaining about we can't raise taxes because she said oh, even in the middle of this we are already dry. Yeah, there's nothing. Mm. so it ha we have to raise those resources from elsewhere or you cut, cut expenditures mm. so the story does not seem to end so what we promised and the reality that is coming up every time we are being hit by everything is moving this is like a moving moving part prof that's where the thinking comes in mm. now that, that is why i'm here and i'm telling you about the thinking i can so i cannot summarize it in two hours you yeah. have to take the beauty the beauty the beauty the beauty the beauty the beauty of it is yeah. that the most important thing first of all mm. and let's let's face it we are pre presenting this because this is what it's us inside government because we are all fighting fire isn't it mm. but out there there are two things that you get. There are people complaining, others going to court. Yes. So, in, by the way, how you recover from such is actually coming up with tight policies and even tight interventions. Mm. Okay. Okay? Because that's the only way we solve it. In the short term, you actually generate policy changes and very tight interventions. But you understand optics. No, no, no. Let, let me give you... As you, as you do all those uh, things yeah, yeah. that you let tell us you're tightening. You, let me give you some... And then we see that the mm -hmm. offices mm -hmm. of the president, the deputy, the, the, are receiving more budgetary allocation. And some areas are receiving less in terms of development. But, 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 you, you see now, optics. 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 Let me let me add let me add the third let me add, let me the, add the third dimension because all these rescues, Eronino rescues, are in the His Excellency Deputy President's office. Constantly we are saving lives. But we are looking at the wrongs. Let, let, I always tell told people because I was in literature as well, mm. especially existentialism. I was in the existentialism literature. Most of the time, we find ourselves looking at things from the wrong end of the telescope. Mm. And that's what we are good at. Let's avoid that, please. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Waziri, but I have to ask because it is burning. And I'm going back to this thing. I, I, I like watching series, especially when murders happen, right? A murder has happened. Mm -hmm. But one thing that always happens is that the investigator will go back to the crime scene to look for clues to give you the answer. And now I'm saying, and what a lot of people have said, including the controller of budget today, is that there's expenditure that is inexplicable. There is expenditure that cannot be pointed to particular projects. So here we are and we're making these plans for the future and asking Kenyans by your mouth yeah. for the next one year to tighten their belts. But we've not gone back to, the la to see where money has actually been spent, but we want to spend some more. And my question is, this forensic audit that you speak of, yep. this going back to look for the details, it is imperative that it happens. And the question is, when will it happen? Because we are just building on top of let skeletons. Me, let me, let me, it, it has to happen, yeah, Wazir. You're right. And you're right. Is, and, and when will it happen? It is good you have brought that issue because I, look, I, I, I dealt with it even at the dialogue committee, even at the finance committee, because of what the control of budget has said. And let's face it. Because essentially, but I, I, in fact, in the committee, I was brutal because I said she does not work for the treasury. She's an independent she's office, an independent so office. she's free to actually ask for the audit. Let me give you an example of what she actually called. For example, I, I have a travel, I, 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 I travel because there are specific known travels. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the specific known travels, there could be two or three or four, not more than four. But year. the others come in just because of uh, duty requirements mm. so in a sense they have no way of knowing how much i'll travel so they put they put an estimate mm -hmm. and at the end of the year they look at how much did you spend but they still cannot use what you spend to estimate the future they also put an estimate so this money is not spent but they put an estimate because essentially you cannot tell your trouble. Mm -hmm. The second thing she made was that there were loans not yet disbursed. Look, so sometimes it's common sense. Let me say, for, let me talk for myself. Mm. When I signed that letter that I have accepted the job of the Cabinet Secretary of the National Treasury and Economic Planning, the first thing was I am around to, uh, to a, a loan of 40 million to buy a house. Mm. Mm. That goes into the budget, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then I'm around, I think, 10 million or 14 million to buy a car mm. alone, okay? You know, I've signed the letter. It means that 
I've not, I've not said no to the loan, but somehow I'll have to do another process. All my colleagues have done the same. And I give this example in Parliament and even in the dialogue and saying, is that not what happens? I may not take up that loan, but there's no other way of saying, did you want the loan or not? But because you may want it. But you will never no, no, pay no. for it if you didn't receive it. You will no, only no, no, pay no. when you well, receive. Let's, let's, let's put it, what did the controller of budget say? Mm. He said it's not dispersed. Mm. Yep. So the whole thing is that it is budgeted because by the time, by, by the way, if these are the things I'm arguing with and dealing with every day, do I have time to think about taking a loan? <laughs> no, 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 just be serious. And yet. Because let me say, that yet, let me tell you, mm. we have so many, we have so many people who are always looking for, uh, you know, I, I call it, in the, when I'm talking to the media, I say that, please do not throw mud hoping that it is going to stick. Mm. This is throwing the mud that hoping that it will stick. So you have to keep throwing mud to find out what it sticks. But, because but, but, there's, let, but, let me put it this is, way. Let me put it this way. This is not, this is not no, just no, no, it's some not lay a... person mm. making these statements. And this is not a professional person making statements in a marketplace. This is, like you said, an independent office holder yeah. making a presentation to a process instituted by parliament. Yeah. She knows fully well it's going on record. So when yeah. she's saying this, yeah. she's saying this and obviously she must have reason why she's saying. And, she's and saying we have been fully designed to go to the bar to drink. Mm. We have loans that are budgeted for not disbursed. She's basically pointing at some... But, but I have given you the reality. Management. No, no, no. I think you are also missing the point. I'm giving you the reality of why it is there. Mm -hmm. But it is not taken up by anyone. So it's not allocated. The next thing is, I said is that if there are issues like that, I only write to the Auditor General to give me the facts. But the bottom line is that you want to go to the media and say it? If that is how you want to deal with it? If it floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, no. I think if it, it, well, I think it's. Uh, I, uh, the, uh, I don't want to describe it. But what I said is that if it comes to me, I explain factually what is happening here. Professor Luke, but if there is a question. problem, if there is a problem, mm. I will lie to the Auditor General and say, please give me the factual position so that I can wake up in public and say this is and a respond to. Thank you. So, but but you see, you have listened to the facts, and even when I presented it even to a parliamentary committee and even the dialogue they understood what is really happening Professor but the other the first thing i did is let's this uh, this is an independent office it doesn't work for the treasury don't tell me to answer her questions i don't cannot answer her questions Prof, she doesn't Prof, work yeah. for you yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. taxes are a thorny issue yet they are a necessary issue not evil yeah <laughs> they for them to actually work, should they not be a complementary incentive system? Something that encourages people. That's why I asked the question of jump-starting the economy. Because we will pay taxes. We have to pay taxes. Yeah. We must pay taxes. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't that money be available for us to then pay these taxes? Hence my question. The jump-starting of the economy. Yeah. It is absolutely necessary especially now with what we have, how do we encourage, how do we incentivize? Yes, mobilizing local resources is good, but then how do we incentivize so that these resources are available for them to be mobilized? Let me put it this way. And uh, because why I'm talking to you this way is because you also have households that you run. Mm. And you do know that if you don't invest, you are also not going to get returns. It doesn't mean that in times of uh, devastation, mm. you stop that. Yes. No. You have to continue doing that, <laughs> regardless of what you do. That's why we say tighten your belt so that at least you ride over the shock. But look at it this way. We have interventions that we have made. Let me talk about the Hasra Fund, for example, which we had to fight over so many. <laughs> You're still fighting. Yeah, we are still fighting. G to G. Eh? Oil uh, marketing, we have been fighting, which is still fought, we have been fought. I'm even being accused of taking deals at my level and age and where I've come from on my own. I have no time to do deals. And somebody says that in public, and we don't go to court because, you know, you know again, 
you don't want to go to court because you don't want to create uh, so many the bottom line is that we we are being fought even when we bring interventions so i told my sister here that mm. in times of crisis you use interventions that are for possible and policy changes that are feasible okay in times of crisis so that you ride over crisis the Hasra fund is one intervention to leave to those people at the pyramid and stop the furiza not because the furiza is bad but of course it was putting them into a, 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 a bondage and uh, of course shyrox and all that we wanted them to move away from that bondage it is working tomorrow it's uh, not today the, today is 29 yes, tomorrow is tomorrow tomorrow is 30th. 30th no 29th is today mm -hmm. it's yes. a celebration of one year of uh, hasra fund because we launched it now. and they were going to give exam in fact i saw the data i was very excited i also borrow from hasra fund not because i need the money but just to see that it is working because mm -hmm. it's an intervention what's mm -hmm. your limit um I, I, we are in public i can't <laughs> say, i can't say it. Uh, 500. Uh, mine is 500 yeah? <laughs> No, no, no. Mm. I have it has it has been doubled several times because I keep borrowing. Oh. I borrow this week and uh, I pay the next week. <laughs> I'm having savings. That's what now. Means. Why? Okay. Why now? Let me emphasize that point. During crisis, what you do is to introduce policy change, and also formidable interventions that help you ride over the crisis. We have managed to bring the Hasra Fund, which is doing wonders. For those who are using it, not those who are the, the those who thought that it is going to be money for free, they are facing a problem. The second thing is that we have government to government uh, purchases that we influence the market to take up, and our market is very efficient. It's using that, but you can see the fire around it, so they cannot even allow us to push the intervention. Those interventions help us to ride ride over the shocks. Okay. You had several questions you sent me, but uh, uh, did I finish the, the recovery aspect? Let Why the bottom up? You have not responded to this one. Mm. A forensic audit. We have seen the lead of the majority in the National Assembly taking a bill on state capture. When are we expecting you to start this forensic audit on our debt Process. and the, question, yeah. do we have odious debt in Kenya? Oh, Odious debt. Do we have debt that basically we should not be paying? because you did not come to serve the people of Kenya. Now, you see, sovereign debt is sovereign debt, and it has to be paid. We don't know, even if you don't know how it was contracted. That's one thing that you have to realize, and in international law. The second thing is that we have even confidence, uh, sorry, conflict of interest bill in parliament. And we want to make sure that once those bills are passed, we can actually use the law. The, the, the law that, that, that will help us in terms of cleaning up this. Let me put it this Forensic way. audit? Forensic audit, but we also have to be supported. Forensic audit is very, very important, but we also want to be supported by these elements of the legal processes that are going to come. But forensic audit can always be done. The report will it can be, be done? Yes. And the question is, when will it be done? But you see, <laughs> my dear sister sometimes mm. sometimes i i wonder whether you live in this country i do and that's why we I'm are asking. in a crisis first of all we ride over the crisis and then we have resources to even to enact a forensic audit the other day we started the the um the padding bills uh, committee isn't it yes. we have started that mm. the next thing but you see we have to map out what is the forensic audit going to look at mm. and what time for example the 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 pending bills starts from where kibaki left that's a long time isn't it mm. of course we're going to spend money okay mm. so the whole issue is that everything will be done forensic audit but forensic audit on what because there are so many things for example on debt, yeah. on debt. the two that debt billion, is one component the two billion bullet payment yes for the 2014 yeah uh, bond euro mm. bond yeah when the then auditor general yeah. raised questions about where that money has gone mm -hmm. Two billion shillings, yes, has been acquired dollar, by the country. Dollar, dollar. Two billion dollars. Two billion dollars has is been a lot acquired of money. by the country. But he said, if two billion dollars got into this country, we'd have felt it. That was the Auditor General. Yes. So they've been questioned, mm -hmm. on this money that we're paying next year, did it actually come to us? You know there was a forensic audit that was done. Mm -hmm. You know that? No, I don't. There was a forensic audit that was done. What did it find? I haven't looked at the report. Of course, they were given a clean audit because I was out of the process myself. 
I have not looked at it. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting to you that there was a forensic audit. But what I'm also saying is that mm. let me. Uh, I, 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 you, you can have different analogies in terms of what needs to be done. But uh, obviously, they asked the right questions and they went for the uh, the audit. But for my, for me, I'm actually saying the noble duty is that that loan was contracted, that loan has been trading, and that's why the spreads have been widening, and we have to pay it with its duty bound. But what was done with it, if we believe that we can revisit the audit, I think I can agree with you myself. Mm. Personally, I would say, let's go back to that audit and try to find out what happened. It is like uh, I, I wouldn't want to give analogies about what I think because essentially it's not ne necessary right now. Let's let it, the best thing is always to talk after the audit, isn't it? But I do agree with you. An audit should be done mm. for all the debts and what they were used for. In fact, one of my biggest problem, even when I was out there, is actually to see, yes, we produce magnificent projects, but what about the cost? Mm. Can somebody actually do a forensic audit to actually determine the cost of that, that project? It's a good project, all right. It was completed, but what about the cost? Because the returns on that project depend, depends very much on the unit on the cost. cost. So essentially, there are so many things to be done. And as we continue, we are going to chain what kind of issues do we need in the forensic audit. Mm. But coming back, let me put it this way. Of course... When you're in a crisis, you also have to make sure that you don't add more crisis, which actually, because forensic audit is expenditure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Although it will be done by the audit. And the political crisis. But sometimes, the, mm -hmm. but, but there's no political crisis. <laughs> well, I think there is no political the crisis. <laughs> the problem is that we are also surrounded by so Just, just imagine, mm. we are not, not only have an economic crisis, liquidity crisis and all that, but you also have the neighbors having crisis, isn't it? We are also supporting the neighbors. The DRC, DRC. There, uh, it's good Ethiopia, that uh, uh, Sudan. Uh, Sudan. It's good that Somalia has joined the East African community so that they will start dealing with the problem as endogenous to us, isn't it? As a family, mm. a family that that becomes important. But just imagine Sudan and DRC is becoming uh, all those are problems. Prof, but it's, also it's we have also our own I know you social have a problems. That you need yes. To run to. yes. I'm going to ask the last question. Mm -hmm. The shilling has been depreciating yeah. and has been going down. Yeah very far you yeah. have been a man in charge of our monetary policy before yeah. mm -hmm. we have heard the current central bank uh, mm -hmm. governor saying mm -hmm. the previous administration in the central bank basically was playing some games to show up the shilling how far should we expect the shilling to continue dropping that is another another forensic audit that we got to have <laughs> List. Well, at least. My list is because long. essentially, mm. let's put it this way. First of all, I saw your question, and you said the sharing is a free fall. You cannot have a free fall. The exchange rate is a relative price. Based it's on. a ratio of one price to other price, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So essentially, you cannot have a free fall. But let me also may, may put it very uh, clearly, mm. and I agree with the governor, mm. that we went through a period of managed exchange rate. When you have a floating exchange rate, you cannot again intervene in terms of the market process. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let me add another dimension. I hope I, I will not complicate things uh, very much. We were heavily investing, and I'm looking at city this time, we were heavily investing in infrastructure projects, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, we were. So what are we doing? When you invest in he heavily in infrastructure, you are affecting non-tradable sector. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, the super highway on Vika, along the SGR, mm. along the main roads. What are you doing? Rad prices. Land. You are advertising rad prices. Mm. Those are non tradable products because you cannot trade them across the uh, international, isn't Borders, it? Yes. So the non tradable prices were also rising. But you are, have managed the exchange rate. Yeah. It means that you do, did not allow it to adjust. To breathe. The exchange rate, the nominal exchange rate, is an automatic stabilizer. I made those points in 2011, again, when the things were getting thick and people didn't seem to understand. I trained and I said, the nominal exchange rate is an automatic stabilizer. It moves to, to equilibrate the economy. Where are the pain points that come from, that come so that it forces the exchange rate to, the nominal exchange rate to move fast? If we are eating, getting more from foreigners than we are uh, trading, for example, the current account in the balance of payment, mm -hmm. that's one component. The other one is non-tradable sector is prices are rising 
and it has to equilibrate that. So when the non-tradable sector prices are rising, it is the, it is the real exchange rate that's getting misaligned. Okay? Mm -hmm. The nominal exchange rate must move to equilibrate that. So when this new administration came in and took over from the other regime, what happened is that you have to resolve this because there was a parallel market emerging. How can you have parallel market in a floating exchange rate and capital and liberalized capital account? It's unthinkable. How would it function? It has to function because of, of some controls. We had a bad name. You could not even uh, remit your, your, your dividend, isn't it? Yes. In fact, we have managed to reduce the time for remission to, to a few weeks now. But that time, they queued for six, seven months. They were waiting months. for much longer. Yeah. They were waiting for a long time. Are we close to stabilization from your observation? We are almost there. We have restarted. The, by the way, then the interbank collapsed because of that managed food. Ah. I left a very strong inter, foreign exchange, interbank market for foreign exchange. It means that the oil marketers could move in and raise the money they want within a few a few hours. When we came in, they could not. They were even constructing swaps. The first thing I did was to negotiate with the banks to lengthen the swaps. You can imagine, because things were. Done. But you have to again. You interfere with the markets. Back to the markets. The market is only supposed to be regulated. Don't interfere with the market. It's a lesson that we have learned. So, but we are coming back to normality. Mm -hmm. We have introduced the interbank market. We have made sure that the currency is floating. Our capital account is still liberalized. But what we need to do, we have been also been shocked by the global dollar shortage, isn't it? That is also a, a biggest problem. What the frontier economists like us are doing is to come up with a payment system that is currency neutral. So that so that we, we, we can resolve these issues very, very fast. So that you don't have to worry about cross-border payments. That is something that is going to be an innovation. So that if you want to create in dollars, euros and all that, it's up to you. But the payment system should be currency neutral. Right. That way it will support our floating exchange rate. But also make sure that we actually, the exchange rate is a reflection of the stability or equilibrium in the economy. Right now, we are still adjusting by the way i've seen papers saying oh a free fall exchange rate is yes. bad for the currency to depreciate no it's not bad for the currency to depreciate it is adjusting to its true value it is market determined it has to reflect a uh, scarcity or abundance mm -hmm. of the pro of, of, of 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 what is in the market so it's just basically following reality it is following the reality because it was for a long time held without uh, it was not allowed to adjust the moment you interfere so with the market like, i go back that to sound the, like economic crimes yeah, that is why some of these things yeah i mean that is, money that, that could have been I'm borrowed but we don't know where it went i'm yeah. adding it to the list of forensic audit because who who managed the exchange rate and why this is the discrepancy that we are really resolving today when i came here before i came here i was looking at the data on non tradable prices and i could see the way they were sloping and I, was, I wanted to see at what point did the rain start beating us because we have to go back and pick the thread where we left it. Mm. Or we have to go back to where the rain started beating us so that we run the lessons. I think uh, the Gogo Vyongo, the literary guys, give us a lot of uh, ideas, but mm. uh, literature explains a lot of things. So is sociology. Mm. But the most important thing is that let's not repeat the mistakes that we have made in the past. And this is why. The, when I talked about this economy, we are on a tight corner, but using interventions and policy changes and policy realignment, we are going to get there. And this is a national issue. And we have to make sure that that national issue is a goal that everybody will be proud of doing the right thing. But we also have to remove these shenanigans of legal things, everybody rushing to court to block this, to block this. And they don't know why they are blocking it. Again, it's an economic grant issue. People are paying for that. There are people who are daft enough to go and pay for those people to rush to court, by the way, because they want disorder in the market. We have to correct Why? the disorder. There's economic right to generate, to extract economic rent from the market when there is disorder. So and it is unfathomable that the reason why they are doing this is because they truly do feel as though Kenyans are actually at the brunt when it comes to stressing economies at a, at, at a micro level. You know, they come up with arguments not because they are believe. standing somewhere with arguments that you cannot even diagnose and uh, ask questions but you see somebody is daft enough to pay them to go to court 
Yeah. No, that's why somebody goes to oppose uh, Hasrafa. <laughs> no, G to G in Kirinyaga. What has Kirinyaga got to do in Kirinyaga court? It's, they have no even jurisdiction. It's because Kirinyaga is in Kenya. No, no, no. It is true. It's in Kenya. <laughs> but let's go to where the action is taking place so that I, I face to face, I tell you that what you are doing is wrong. We need Rough. to come back and tell people that what you are doing is wrong. You are limiting our mm. energy for adjustment. We need all the energies, by the way. The, let's, let's, let's kill the side shows. Let's, let's focus on what's the bigger thing. Yes. Prof, we thank you very much for coming. Welcome. Someone I have has prepared said, so many answers, but uh, one day I will finish them. You I need to come back so that because we also had very many questions. Yeah, okay. and very many questions that you know we needed to answer um, for this. Will you get out of the domestic market and allow the private sector to borrow? That is where, that is what we are trying to do. This is where the adjustment process is trying to help us. Mm -hmm. Because the crowding out story is massive. The crowding out story is massive. And we, 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 when we came in, we have actually managed to create room for the, for the market. Otherwise, there was nothing. The first thing, let me also explain this. Mm -hmm. We realized that. Somebody must wake up and tell the market, by the way, elections were resolved, we are no longer in a risk, you can borrow long term, medium to long term. And the market, oh, it's time to adjust. That's what we did <laughs> in May. I started in April. And all of a sudden they realized, oh yes, but somebody must come and tell the market all. Oh, you remember where we are? We now can adjust. We can borrow long term, medium to long term. Okay? Okay. And then we started doing that in, in May. So essentially, the process is there. It's only that we don't document, but I think we should document. We but should. look at look at what happened in the end of May. We actually floated a, a board that was medium term. So move away from 181, 182 days and 91 days. Let's go to medium term and then to long term. Then don't forget, I floated a board of 30 years, savings and development board when I was in the central bank. I asked, is it still trading? Again, we have to go to that market and ask, why are we not, or why is OTC not working? Again, there are so many things to fix. I was sitting with the market for over two hours. Yesterday, I was met by the Matato owners, and then they talked about the insurance. We sat for three hours because I told them, the market has failed you, and we have to go, all of us, fix the market. I am telling you this because the reality must be told. Mm. The markets have failed us. That's why in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, the component of markets is the one that is going to give us the right that we want. Okay. Thank you very much. I will start from there the next time I come. Professor mm -hmm. Jagon Ndongo, uh, Cabinet Secretary for the National Treasury and Economic Planning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.